Architectural presentation boards. What's up with that? So there comes a time in every architect's life that he has to do a presentation. And to me, this is one of the scariest aspects of architecture. Imagine standing in front of people whose sole purpose for that time being is to judge you. I've done quite a few presentations in my day and I found out that having a really great looking presentation board removes or somewhat alleviates some of the fears of being judged. Cause in my mind, if they're busy looking at my awesome presentation board, then they won't even notice my big lips or my roundular nostrils. What is wrong with you people? Afraid to look ugliness in the face? Well, here! Look at it! It's ugly, isn't it? Not everybody's as handsome as Bjark Ingels, guys, so we have to compensate with good-looking presentation boards. Look at it! Anyways, that's beside the point. Basically, architectural presentation boards are the manifestation of your ideas and concepts. This is the culmination of all your sleepless coffee-driven nights and hard work. So it is important that your ideas are conveyed properly in a simple yet eye-catching presentation board. So for today, we are going to learn some tips to improve your architectural presentation boards. Let's go! I don't know where I'm going and also I went the opposite way where I was pointed at. Dang it. First thing we got to do when making our presentation boards is to list down what information we would need to display on the board. For example, we would need the floor plan, some site plan, and some schematic drawings, exterior perspectives, etc. Once we got that list on lockdown, we now have to develop what I like to call a storyline. Every great movie has a great story, and this is also applicable to our presentation boards, which are sometimes called architectural storyboards. Basically, to do this, all we need to do is to arrange your information that we listed a while ago in a logical order. It's kinda like we're telling a story of how we came up with the design, where there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. We are going to arrange our information accordingly. For example, first we got our problem, which in most cases includes text that explain the current situation and what needs to be done. And we often accompany this information with our site plan or our existing site conditions. Then after that, we have our solutions to the problem, which often includes some diagrams and schematic concepts, sketches, and whatnot. When all that is done, we arrive to the answers to our problems or the conclusion. Here's where we show our final results, like the floor plans, the sections, elevations, and perspectives, and all those things. Now that we're done with our storyline, time to proceed to the third tip, which is to pick a layout type or overall arrangement of the items on our main board. For this, there are three popular layouts of architectural presentation boards. The first and most popular one is the grid, where you arrange items based on a grid guideline. This is the most common because it is the easiest to do and information presented in this grid-like fashion tend to be easier to understand. Second layout type is the thematic layout type where you arrange your information with a certain style or design aesthetic. For example, we got this presentation board based around this layered design aesthetic or this one with a circular theme or this one with a geometric crisscross thingy going on. Moving on to the third layout which is called the centralized style where you have a central object or a main focal point from which you surround your supporting elements. Kinda like Beyonce and Destiny's Children. <laughs> That's a super weird analogy. <laughs> Anyway, the main focal point is often a perspective or a section of the project and it is featured in a way that your eyes will gravitate towards it immediately. To achieve this, the central object is often scaled up to appear at least two times bigger than any object on the board and is often the most colorful piece, leaving the surrounding graphics around it often in a monochromatic color. Aside from layout types, we have our layout styles, which is our fourth tip, to develop a layout style. In today's architectural presentation meta, we have three popular layout styles. These are the minimalist, the background bleed, and the color combo. Of these three, my most favorite one is definitely the minimalist style because it is the easiest and less time consuming. But if I had a ton of time on my hands, I would definitely go for the background bleed style. So let's talk about minimalist layout style. 
So this style is often characterized by monochromatic line diagrams and pastel desaturated tones. It also features a lot of negative space or blank white areas. So what these negative spaces does is it gives emphasis to the items and information we have presented on the board. It also gives the viewer a feeling of rest and repose, giving the viewer enough time to take in all the information which helps you convey your story better. On the contrary, when compared to a board with so much information cramped into it, the viewer will probably feel overwhelmed and, well, not know when to begin to look at your board and sometimes if they are lazy like me, they'll often just result to looking at the pictures instead of trying to understand the concept of the whole project. <laughs> The next style is called the background bleed. I'm sorry if the name sounds like a death metal band. I couldn't come up with a better name for this style. Anyways, background bleed or let's just call it BB for short, is characterized by having a main object with a background that bleeds or extends into the rest of our board, thus the moniker. So this background often slowly dissolves into a single color, which in turn becomes the background of our other supporting objects. This is super cool and super eye-catchy. This style is often paired with the centralized layout type to help bring emphasis to the focal point of the project, which in many cases is the perspectives. Last style is the color combo, also named by yours truly. <laughs> so if you think the names are stupid sounding, that's on me, my bad guys. <laughs> Anyways, color combo is characterized by having a theme color that ties all the elements of your presentation board together. The colors often used are bright, eye-catchy colors like yellow, orange, red, and turquoise. But you could use any color that you want as long as it remains constant all throughout your presentation board. Okay, now that we are familiar with all the layout types and styles, you could now pick a certain combination or layout type and style to apply to your presentation board. And with that, we can now move on to the fifth tip which is to draw a composition blocking or an overall layout sketch. This is a very important step so that we could avoid redoing our layout cause we forgot to place a thing or two on our presentation board. We begin by drawing a rectangle which represents our presentation board. Then all we have to do is to roughly draw the various locations of our objects to be presented. While doing so, we have to keep in mind tips one to four. First is keep in mind our information that we listed. Then we need to look at our storyline. Make sure we are placing our objects in an understandable and comprehensible manner. Third, we need to pick a layout type in which we will lay out our storyline. So for this one, we are doing a grid type. Then lastly, we are going to need to apply a layer style. So for the purposes of this video and cause I'm a bit lazy today, we're gonna go with the minimalist layer style. And boom, we have our sketch of how our presentation board is supposed to look like. And just like that, we are almost done with our presentation board scheme. Now all you got to do is to actually make the presentation board with the real objects. And for that, I will leave some links to the videos in the descriptions below by some of my fellow YouTubers who made tutorials on how to create presentation boards with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe InDesign because I ain't got no time to make those yet. So go check them out. They got really great videos. So yeah, we're almost done with the video, but wait, what's that? <laughs> Let's just do that again. Wait, what's that? Quick fire round. Pew, 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 pew. So this is the first quick fire round that we are going to do. So let, let me just explain. Okay, so quick fire round is this concept that I just recently came up with where I bombard you guys with concise tips relating to our main topic. So take notes because I won't be repeating myself unless of course you guys hit the replay button but you know you guys get the point so let's go quick fire round i'll probably add the sound effects later or not if i'm lazy your board must be simple and easily understood by layman must have a cohesive theme it must have a uniform style and color you must provide hierarchy Largest item must be the most important feature. Avoid placing distracting elements. Like this video. Composition. Apply rule of thirds and other photography shenanigans for additional artsy points. Don't forget to smile when presenting. Subscribe to my channel. And like this video. Quick fire round is now over. And with that, I guess I will see you guys on my next video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me how awesome architecture is. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you on my next video. Flying peace!